Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction, Rai. Um, I'm really excited to be back, both as a member of Cypress Creek um, as well as an alum of Carolina. Uh, as Rai mentioned, just last year I was sitting in this audience, but as a student, so um, it's, it's exciting to be back in a slightly different capacity this year. This event plays an incredibly important role in our community, bringing together both public and private institutions to discuss pressing issues in clean tech, such as renewables or water, um, sustainable agriculture, and a variety of different topics that we've addressed over the past four years at this summit. It really serves as a breeding ground um, for public-private partnerships, which have been pivotal in making the Triangle and North Carolina as a whole a leader in clean tech. Um, you know, it provides tremendous opportunities to foster relationships between students, their university, government, nonprofits, and an industry. Several years ago, I went with Greg Gange, as many of you, you all know, um, to Germany to study abroad. And there we visited the Fraunhofer Institute. The Fraunhofer Institute, I think, truly exemplifies the idea of a public-private partnership. They have students working there and you know, participating in research. They're both publicly and privately funded. They receive a lot of funds through conducting R&D for different companies throughout Germany. They also receive public funding as well to conduct research for the government. And it's something from which everyone benefits. Just after visiting, a few months after, um, Greg planned the first Clean Tech Summit, um, really memorializing that North Carolina, and the Triangle in particular, is a leader within this space. Um, you know, opportunities like the Clean Tech Summit didn't exist a few years ago, and they're really built on these ideas of public-private partnerships. And it's really wonderful to be a part of this community, which, you know, Chancellor Folt mentioned this year, it's a thousand people who are participating in this. It's incredible. Um, and to know that 700 of them are, are from nonprofits or government or industry um, and get to sit here with, you know, 300 or more students. So it's really exciting. And, um, you know, so I want to take a moment to really applaud the Institute for the Environment, as well as all the organizations um, for being part of this community and really fostering these relationships um, that have helped students, um, as well as North Carolina as a whole. So a few months after the inaugural Clean Tech Summit, I came to Greg with a very long presentation um, about why I actually should leave Carolina for a few months. Um, I, I had just come out of a really wonderful summer working at Sungevity and was on a high about the solar industry and had participated in the first Clean Tech Summit and went to a, a different conference um, on solar in, in the Bay Area. And after that, I knew, as many sophomores don't know or going into junior year, that I wanted to be in project finance for solar. So in some ways, it was kind of strange. Why wouldn't I just power through and graduate early? go into industry and, and dive into it um, as soon as possible. But I, I came to Greg and proposed the idea of kind of a co-op program. Um, we, we brainstormed back and forth and thought about, okay, would I be able to graduate on time? How would this work? How would this benefit my education and the beginning of my career? And, uh, you know, within a few months, I was packing my bags and uh, found myself walking into a small room with maybe about six other employees at Cypress Creek Renewables, and we were sharing that room at the time with another startup. Um, and now, as, as Brian mentioned, it's um, grown into one of the largest solar companies in the country. So I worked at Cypress for about seven months, first starting in development and moving to project finance, and had the opportunity to really just pick every single person's brain. People who had been in the solar industry for many, many years and sit down with them and grab coffee and learn about different things and from day one just kind of be thrown into the lion's den of everything that is solar development, which was an incredible opportunity. But for me, what was most important is that after seven months, I had the opportunity upon coming back to Chapel Hill to continue working out of our Carborough office. And through that, upon my return to UNC, sat down with Greg and looked at my coursework that I still had, what electives and opportunities I had at Carolina to really refocus my coursework to make myself both a better student and a better professional. And to some people it may seem obvious, but I was actually kind of surprised after um, you know, a few months being back how just how much my coursework really informed my career and how much my day-to-day -day at work really informed my classes. Um, 
you know, I was able to see immediate value rather than learning necessarily in just a silo or in the abstract and take what I learned and, you know, go straight back to the office and apply that. One of the most exciting things for me when I was later um, working with some interns on my own was an intern turned to me and he said, you know that model that I worked on last week? Can I redo it? Sure, you know, why do you want to redo it? Uh, it, it you know, it, it worked, it was fine. Let's talk about it. He's like, well, the class that you actually suggested that I take before starting at Cyprus for financial modeling, I learned something there. And I think I can make all of these formulas a lot more efficient. I think it can make it work better, and I want to try it out. And that's really incredible to see just he came out of the class and came to the office and was so excited to apply that immediately. And not just, you know, apply it for, you know, hitting a deadline for class or, you know, making it a little bit better, but he was able to come there and get this model going and make it more efficient and help get, you know, we say this a lot at Cyprus, get as much solar into the ground as possible. So for someone who is really interested in solar, so whether it be solar or water or sustainable agriculture, to come into work later in the day after being in class and immediately see an impact from what you're learning and have it really, it, it's a really symbiotic relationship, which is really exciting and in many ways um, really exemplifies the idea of a public-private partnership, especially when you do have these longer internship programs um, rather than just a few weeks. So, you know, another, another example is my current intern, who's also a rock star. I think she's somewhere sitting in here. Um, but she worked with us in the summer and then continued working for Cyprus during the school year. And to just see, even as she, during the school year, works fewer hours, her learning curve has just accelerated tremendously over, you know, the past few months as she's been working part-time. And it's a really cool idea that someone who's 20, I guess now 21, can come in and while she's working a few hours, actually take on more responsibility and more ownership over their work. So to the many organizations here, keep in mind just how valuable all of the graduate and undergraduate students here are. You know, helping them have these meaningful career-enhancing opportunities is a huge benefit to all of us, um, whether in the public or private sector. Um, you know, while we're slogging away in, in the real world, universities and students have a fresh perspective and are at the cutting edge and can really provide all of us um, with, with many benefits to, you know, to bring different innovation to our work. And to allow students to have longer term opportunities and kind of find their sea legs within these programs is hugely important. Um, you know, to only provide students with you know, opportunities that really don't give them the opportunity to take accountability and take ownership of their work is in many ways a loss to the company. Um, and it's not sustainable. So, you know, I think investing in the universities, if you're from a nonprofit or from a business, um, and for students getting involved in local companies and seeing if you can have longer term programs or opportunities really speaks to what um, Governor Cooper was talking about in investing in our workforce and providing companies, the CEOs that he's talking to, with a strong educated workforce that can help um, North Carolina stay on top of clean tech and become, continue as a leader. So one other part um, of my experience that was hugely important while, while at Cyprus was mentorship. You know, Rai mentioned earlier, you know, the, the dirty word of networking. But this really is an important aspect of this, of this summit. Um, you know, whether you're a student here or otherwise, this, this is a great opportunity um, to invest in our clean tech community here. If you're a student, take advantage of all the mentors available at the university. They can also help you find mentors within the clean tech community. You know, so many of us have, as students, had ideas percolating about our next startup idea or whatever, but every good entrepreneur has a really wonderful mentor behind them. And so to get involved in an established company in the triangle or a startup in the triangle is really beneficial and it's not to be overlooked, kind of the mentorship opportunity there. You know, every job I've had has either come directly or indirectly through the university. Before we had the Clean Tech Summit, Greg used to bring in speakers and Alec Gettle, one of the uh, co-founders of Sungevity, spoke to us our, my freshman year about solar economics and my head was just like a game of pinball. I was so excited after and ran down and asked him so many questions. 
And my biggest mistake was that I waited an entire year to send him my resume after he said to send it to him um, for internship opportunities because I got too nervous. And we didn't have opportunities like the Clean Tech Summit to really see how networking worked. So, you know, through that, while I was working at Sungevity, I actually met our CEO um, of my current company, Matt McGovern, at a conference. So it's all of these opportunities, you know, I really, I, I look around here, and especially to the students, there was about a third of the people in here. If, if you guys will raise your hand again. Okay, so to all the students in here, you know, take advantage of that. For everyone who's not a student, look around, see the people who raise their hands. That could be the next director of your organization or of a part of your organization. That, uh, if you're a student to all the other people in the room, that could be the person who helps elevate your career and become a lifelong mentor and friend. So as we kick off this summit, um, which, you know, as I said before, is really important for this community, um, go meet everyone you can. We have wonderful organizations here who really want to invest in your future, um, and it's a, to a benefit for, for all of us in the state. So um, thank you for having me, and I look forward to another successful summit. Thank you. Thank you.